This is definitely a bad idea. Millie, be careful. Millie, come here. Hey, Millie. Millie. We're gonna break all the compositional rules. Of I'm a rule breaker. I don't like to follow any of those rules. I'm sorry. People really say, you know what? His river was one square off on the grid of symmetry. I don't think I can buy that painting. Or what I'm into is impressions, emotions, moods. I think it's better to be original, authentic, unique, and hindered by rules. You know? Good composition, no matter how it's achieved, causes the viewer to want to hold their gaze. So be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I have a second painting that we have for this video and I'll share my compositional thoughts on that one. What a beautiful place. Okay, what I like about this composition, this scene, is uh, the river shows some nice perspective and is a nice contrast to the snow. You've got these, these real nice, tall, evergreen trees on the right and then that red. I'm just going down the river to see what it might look like from the other view. Me and Millie gotta be careful here because things aren't quite frozen over. They're frozen over pretty good, but I gotta be careful. I don't wanna fall in and go for a swim today. Well, I guess Millie's my test subject today for safe ice. I hate to do that. Millie, come here. Hey, Millie. 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 She just runs out ahead of me. She's got no fear. <laughs> like the attitude, but keeps me a little bit worried. Okay, here's another choice of composition, just looking the other way down the river. I like this also, just in a different way. I like this red bush right here. It's gonna stand out. Um, I do like the river, the way it looks, the color of it. Just being able to, to get a lot of colors and values in there um, will be really, really fun. Although it doesn't have that perspective like the other view, it's, it's kind of a, uh, a curve in the river, so it, it dead ends with that, that big kind of mountain hillside right there. I still be able to get those colors in, those red colors in. So it's a tough choice. I like this, I like how it looks. I like the feel of it and uh, I like the colors, the values. I just gotta decide what what connects with me the most. What, what do I really wanna paint? What energizes me and excites me about painting? So uh, I don't know, throw in the comments which view you like. We'll see. All right, I think I am gonna take that second choice of composition. I like it. It's a little challenging, but uh, I think it'll be pretty cool. So now I gotta go back and find my, my sled and my stuff and yeah, here it is. You kinda get back to that spot. This is definitely a bad idea, but I gotta go this way if I wanna get down there. I couldn't get my gear and my sled to the other way. All right, see what happens, man. Hey, how's it going this week? Hope you're doing good. Are you having trouble deciding what to paint? What your scene's gonna look like? Struggling with your composition a little bit. I'm going to talk to beginner planner and painters about how to pick your composition, how to pick your scene, and uh, how to impressionistically paint a magical river forest scene. <laughs> just, just kidding. Uh, it's not going to be a magical river forest scene, but uh, we are on the river. It's snowy, it's icy, it's uh, the middle of winter here. We're going to break all the compositional rules of photography. Leading lines, symmetry, rule of thirds. It ain't happening today. We're going to be a rule breaker. Let me show you how I do composition. Hope you have fun. Here we go. Well, hey, if we're just meeting, I'm Terry, and uh, my passion is plein air painting. Being outdoors, enjoying God's beauty, and helping beginner plein air painters with tips and techniques. And uh, here's why you should subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're here every week in the high mountains of Colorado. Awesome, beautiful scenery that you can see every week. Get to see some plein air painting and uh, just relax, chill out, and get some peace in your life. And uh, hopefully you can take up some plein air painting if you haven't already. And if you have, we can kind of help you make it a little bit better, hopefully. All right. Will you check this scenery out? Unbelievable, I love this. All right, we're just walking up on the painting scene and uh, Millie is getting perilously close to the river. I can't help it, I try to keep her away, but what can I say? She's a true plein air painting dog. She'll do anything to get a good painting. So what we're looking at here, I just chose this composition because I like the way the, the river leads in. I like the reds in the scene. Uh, I like this, the kind of reds of these, these bushes here, those cliffs right there and the cliffs up there as well. That composition could sneak into, into this. I like the darks of the evergreens right back there. I like the, you know, these, these kind of lighter colors of these cottonwood trees that are, that are dead, but still will add some nice color to the painting. And uh, I'll talk more about composition as we get going. We are high in the mountains of Southwest Colorado. 
All right, let's look at our uh, painting materials and supplies real quick, and then we'll get into painting. Okay, you saw the sled. I use it a lot in the wintertime. We had a bit of a problem with the canvas. Punctured a hole in it getting down here. That's why you always want to bring extra supplies on your plein air journeys. All right, we've got a painting stool. I've got a bad back, as I've explained, from my pro hockey playing days. I like to sit. Uh, I've got a new easel this week. Whoa! Yes, 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 yes. I'm so excited. It's uh, it's built by On Plein Air Pro, and I can't wait to try it out. There's a lot of things I like about it. I'll do a separate video on it, and uh, we can talk about the pros and cons of it compared to my old French box easel and other easels. If you're new to us, welcome, and uh, let's go through the paints that I use. Here we got titanium white. We've got a mixture of gray that I just kind of push aside after paintings and keep for a neutral tone. Uh, we've got permanent rose, alizarin crimson, cad red, cad orange, cad medium yellow, cad yellow light, phthalo green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue. We've got a big old glob of ultramarine blue and phthalo blue right there. An 11 by 14, yeah, an 11 by 14 Dick Blick outdoor plein air painting canvas uh, board. I love these. They're very practical, very quick and easy to use. And incidentally, I have an affiliation with Dick Blick. Dot com. So if you click those links below, at no extra cost to you, you can see all the materials that I use and uh, brushes, paints, and everything. And I really love DickBlick.com. I've used them for years, even before I started doing videos. Just uh, the best selection, best service, best products. We've got a tea, a hot tea. It's cold out today. Uh, today's video is sponsored by Arbon. Just kidding. This is uh, Arbon Health and Nutrition Products. We're about ready to get going here. Let's take a look at my brushes real quick. I use uh, Filberts mostly, hog's hair bristle, and uh, some palette knives. Palette knives are used to scrape the paint off your palette there when you make a mess afterward and back in your studio. But also, I paint a lot with palette knives. I just ordered a new palette knife here because I lost my other one on the trail. And so I mostly use number 12 Filberts right here. This is a Robert Simmons Signet brush, a longer bristled brush that's great for different effects. Got a number eight, number six Filbert. I carry one flat right there, and another Robert Simmons signet, a signature brush for signing paintings. Never know when you might sell one. And uh, I've got some odorless turpenoid right here, paper towels, trash bag, and knapsack. Always leave the environment the way you found it. Hey, I'm excited. Look, it's snowing. Yes, I love this. Let's do this. Hey, if you're new with us, uh, welcome again. And the first thing that I do in my painting process on plein air is I put on a wash. Just have a very thin mixture here of some alizarin crimson and some uh, phthalo blue. I want to do a cool wash today, so I'm mixing some cool colors. You know, with a wash, um, I, I like to put a wash on because I don't like the sterile white canvas staring back at me. Very intimidating. It says to me, Terry, you can't paint. Look at the white bright canvas. Don't you dare put anything on it. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. The reason I put a wash on is it helps me read the, uh, the lighter values on my canvas in particular. And so I'm just using kind of a cooler wash today because it is a cooler day out there and you can use a warm wash if you'd like. Sometimes when it's a cool day like this, it's fun to use a warm wash to kind of get that contrast. Sometimes your wash shows through, sometimes it doesn't, but uh, it's mostly for color reading purposes for me. I'll put a little more alizarin crimson down here just for the heck of it. This is the first stage, I call it the drawing stage and I do two things, I do a wash and then I do the four P's. I do my drawing. I do pieces, placement, proportion, and perspective. So let me talk to you about that real quick, the four P's. I divide the uh, landscape into three to five larger pieces that make sense to me. And placement, I make sure that everything is in its proper boundary, its proper perimeter, where it's supposed to go in the composition. Proportion, I make sure that everything is proportionally sized the way it's supposed to be sized. You can have some artistic license, but uh, you don't want to make the river you know, way too big, unless you're just trying to do a, a painting like that. And then perspective. The river is gonna help me show perspective uh, because it's gonna start off real wide and then it's going to, you know, get narrow as it kind of goes around the bend. And that'll be a way for me to show depth and, uh, and space and perspective. So pieces, placement, proportion, and perspective. Let's get on to the drawing. I'm gonna put it in time lapse and do that real quick and then we'll come back and talk about what I did. Okay, 
Okay, let's uh, zoom in here and see what we did in uh, stage one, the drawing stage. When you talk about composition and deciding what to paint, you know, what you really want to do is simplify. So we have four simple large pieces. Piece number one is going to be the background behind the river. There's a forest back there. Piece number two will be the river itself right here. Piece number three will be the banks to the right of the river. And piece number four will be these interesting trees and uh, on the left side of the bank. So uh, the other thing you want to do in the drawing stage, what I do is I put in my darkest dark. I always start with my darkest dark because it keys my painting to help me put in more accurate colors and values. And so I've got them here on the river banks. I've got them here in piece number four with these trees at the base of these trees. And again, the ice and the shadow here in the outcroppings of the uh, snow banks into the river. So I've got my darkest darks. Now, if the, if the sun were shining, which it almost is, it's coming in and out, believe it or not, it's been snowing and that's how it is in Colorado. Uh, you could put the shadows in. So your darkest darks, your shadows, and your four Ps. All right, so let's get into the abstract stage. Stage two of my painting process. And let's talk about composition. All right, let's get into some color mixing here. Let's get a few colors pre-mixed on the palette so we can rock and roll and get into this painting. Uh, let's look at the, the riverbank color to the left, uh, the shadows on the river, the ice on the river. Let's go with a little bit of, uh, for that, alizarin crimson. Let's go with some cerulean blue, a very cool blue color. Mix that together. And I see a tad bit of, just a little bit of green in there. So I'm gonna go with some cad yellow light and see what that does to the mixture. Kind of graze it down a bit, but still keeps it cool. And let's go ahead and mix the, the watercolor while we're at it. I'm gonna start with some, for that, some ultramarine blue. We'll put it right next to it so we can kind of compare our colors and values. And again, I'm going to go with some cerulean blue. A little bit of phthalo green in there. It is a greenish blue color. It's not the darkest value in the painting, but it's probably the second or third darkest value. Very cool in temperature. Put a little, uh, let's put a little permanent rose in there. Let's see what we get. A very cool red color. I'm going to go with a little bit of titanium white. Let's see what that does. Titanium white is very cool. It's too blue, it's too, too cool. So I'm gonna put a little yellow ochre in there. I'm gonna put a little tad orange in there, the opposing and complementary color of blue, violet. It's a little more cerulean blue and see if that dials us in. Some alizarin, crimson, okay? So let's get that for the watercolor. That'll get us going. Let's get the color of those evergreens in the back behind the river. And they're, they're kind of, you just kind of say, ask yourself, you know, what color family? If you want to watch that video I did on how to mix oil colors on plein air, I think it's a very, very helpful video on how you mix outdoors and see colors when you're painting outside. A lot different than the studio. So I'm going to just say, hey, it's in the green family. So I'm going to do a little phthalo green. You can do, you can get green by doing ultramarine blue and then a little cad yellow. It's a good way to see that's too intense, too much chroma. So I need to dial that back a bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of alizarin crimson in there, cad red. And then I'm gonna go with some yellow ochre. This needs to be lighter in value compared to my darkest darks, which are on the riverbank. Do one more darkest dark shadow right over here. Phthalo blue and alizarin crimson for my very darkest dark, okay? So if you remember, when you look at composition, you want to keep your four, your four values in mind. And for me, I, I just use a four value scale. You can use a six or an eight or a 10 value scale from lightest to darkest, but I use light, mid-tone, dark, and black. And so when you're thinking about composition and, and what to paint, and you get to the easel, and you sit there and you start, just make sure that early on, you get your pieces, your three to five pieces, and then you get your three or four main values in the painting. And that alone will really get you off to an awesome start in a plein air painting if you can do that and accomplish that correctly. I still want to make it not as much chroma, not as much power pack. So I'm just thinking as we're mixing here, just kind of going on the fly. I'm gonna put a little phthalo blue in to cool it. And then I'm gonna go with more permanent rose, like quite a bit of it. And that'll take away the chroma and the vibrancy of it, but it really makes it too dark in value. So I'm gonna put a little cat orange in there and a little bit more yellow ochre. Let's go with more orange. 
and then a little titanium white. And that should get me pretty close. Kind of a grayish green color, okay? All right, why don't we do the snow color? Let's just mix up all the colors while we're at it. Let's just get the snow in there. And for snow color, it's gonna be a big part of this painting, the composition. It's so beautiful. Um, the sun isn't shining, but uh, it's okay. This is what we call a tonal painting. This painting today is strictly based on values, getting the right value and the right color because there's no sunlight. So normally you would paint everything that's in the light and everything that's in the shadow. So I'm gonna start off with titanium white. And then I'm gonna go with a little bit of ultramarine blue and just a bit of permanent rose. So use any kind of purple mixture that you want. You might have cad red, you might have some magenta and just get a lighter value, cooler purple color going. And then I'm just gonna dip a little bit of orange, the slightest bit, because it's the complementary color of violet. All right, let's get going and start blocking this in. I call it the abstract stage. I hope your week's going good. Welcome again. And uh, I'm batching it this weekend. My wife and two daughters are in uh, Denver, Colorado, visiting some friends. So uh, I'm able to just kind of take my time and be out here and just enjoy God's beauty and get a plein air painting done. And thank you for joining me. I really appreciate your time. I know it's valuable. Okay, we're just going to start here on the riverbanks and try to uh, quickly block in and just get this icy riverbank color in here and then we can talk about composition here in just a second once we kind of as we do this let's just go ahead and do that right now I mean let's just talk about breaking all the rules of composition okay so when you look at composition what you're deciding to paint and how you frame things and how you you know how you decide what to put in your painting you know you've got photographers have those great rules you know the rule of thirds a third a third a third and a lot of oil painters uh, plain air landscape painters use that too so you know a third of your painting should be the sky a third this and a third the ground and then, or you can divide it up this way into thirds and then have the grid of nine blocks and then you gotta put something off center. So you've got rules of symmetry, you know, framing, you know, how do we frame it? Do we want a tree branch to kind of lead you in or an archway to kind of show the view and frame it? You know, you've also got leading lines, you know, maybe I want a, a dead log to kind of lead us into the painting and be situated somewhere around here to lead your eye into the painting. And then, you know, of course there's, there's compositional rules like, you know, don't put things in the middle of the painting. Don't ever do that. And it's not pleasing to the eye. Um, you know, I know this is kind of controversial and you might disagree with me and I totally welcome your feedback and your opinion on it. If you're a photographer or a painter and you really hold fast to those rules and they've helped you, that's awesome. I, I applaud you for that. I'm just trying to give you a different way to look at things, a, 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 maybe a different way to think about it. For me, I'm a rule breaker. I don't like to follow any of those rules. I'm sorry, I just don't. <laughs> I, uh, I'm not really a rule breaker, but w what I'm into is impressions, emotions, moods, uh, memories. That's what I'm into. So if it happens to break some of those rules, that's okay with me. I'm not going to be held to those rules. That's just me. I'm just not going to. I'm going to paint what attracted me to the to the composition to the scene. I'm going to I want to get that emotion on canvas, what it felt like to be there in that time, you know, in winter on a snowy, icy river. That's what I want to capture. I mean, do people really say, you know what, his river was one square off on the grid of symmetry. I don't think I can buy that painting or look at it, actually. <laughs> I don't think so. So again, if you have your way of doing things, uh, that's, that's completely fine. I just want to kind of maybe keep you open to looking at a different way of, of thinking about composition, maybe a way that you haven't thought about before. Um, personally, the less inhibited that I can be with rules like that, the better it is for my painting. I mean, for me, plein air painting is all about painting that kind of intimate emotion of what attracted you to the scene in the first place. I mean, that's how I decide what to paint. Uh, as I walked around on the, on the river today and decided what to paint, you know, I could have painted in four or five different directions, but when it comes down to it, you'll know. It'll strike you, either the light or uh, an object or just uh, kind of an intimate emotion or feeling of, of that river, the quietness of the forest, the magical forest. <laughs> Sorry. All right, let's get in piece number one in there in the back and uh, just trying to describe it with the right, the right color and the right value and get it blocked in quick and get it blocked in early. Use a big number 12 brush and just go quickly. Our snow in here.
using very thin paint, so I've got a lot of terpenoid, you know, in, in my paint mixture. And then I build thin to thick, big pieces to small pieces. Kind of seeing a green color to it. Just trust your instincts. Again, rather than going by those formulaic rules, trust your instincts, trust what you see. Just paint what you feel, paint how it feels. My style is impressionism, yours doesn't have to be. You know, talking about trusting your instincts, you know, here's another tip on, on composition. Visualize the finished painting before you start. Have you ever tried to do that? That's really been helpful for me. Visualize what your painting is going to look like in the end if you nail everything right and just make a beautiful gorgeous painting Just visualize it and uh, And then trust your instincts, you know start with the end in mind And trust yourself as you go To come up with that finished product if you will that finished idea we talked about uh, last video painting water if you haven't seen that one go take a look we talked about different techniques for water painting that we're going to apply to this painting because uh, we've got a beautiful Colorado River here that we're painting. I'll tell you, this, this scenery here to me, I know you think of mountains when you think of Colorado, but this really says uh, Colorado to me sitting on a river like this. Just unbelievably beautiful. Just going to try to capture the different colors that I see happening back here in the forest. I want to keep the value lighter as I recede back into the painting there's not a lot of i mean i'm close up and there's a that river bend is 100 yards from me so i don't have the usual open landscape that i'm usually painting with you guys I'm kind of boxed in here on the river man but it's different and i think you should challenge yourself with different compositions like that that you know that are uh, that are challenging but the one thing you know that i want to say about composition with those three to five pieces is that you know our brain has a tendency to want to create detail with painting and art. We want to uh, put a formula to it. We want to put a, a number and a and a step-by-step -step to it. We want to look and zero in on the tree branch and paint the flea on the dog's butt. Uh, but my my style, Impressionism, uh, doesn't really teach that. I was trained in Russian Impressionism and that's not really, it's not really how it works for me. I really try to see things in big pieces and colors and shapes and really keep it messy like that until the very end of the painting and then I bring it together. Right now my composition doesn't look like much and it's not really supposed to. I have an idea of what I want it to look like in the end. I will accomplish it. Just haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> kind of cover a piece in really quickly and just impressionistically. I like how the paint breaks with a palette knife just to kind of show the snow coming down back there in the evergreen forest. It just kind of makes its way down here. Really thick paint there. We'll keep that in. I and mean, that's just a very kind of impressionistic quick way to, to cover up that piece, you know? All right, let's just kind of get that riverbank color in again that we may have lost. Get the right value, the right color. Just trying to go with the least amount of brush strokes possible. It's pretty cold today. I don't want to, I love being out here, but uh, I got to think about the weather and I got to think about Millie. Okay, this left side of the riverbank I'm comparing. One thing I always do is compare one piece to another as I paint. And I'm comparing this riverbank over here to this side. I'm just seeing, and I'm just noticing it's just a little bit maybe darker in value, cooler in temperature. So let's just see if I can accomplish that. We're gonna get thick pretty quick here just because it's just fun. And these riverbanks are just so beautiful with all the snow. See what happens. Oh, it's probably a little more like what I was after. So the river winds way back here. 
and just kind of show that go back like that. So form a nice contrast. I don't know, I think the river, it may completely freeze this winter. I don't really know. We'll see. It's gonna make some lighter colors over here. Lighten up that piece a bit. And then later we'll get the subtleties in these pieces. That's the, uh, that's the forming stage, later. We're almost there. I gotta get some stuff in first. I gotta finish up here. Let's get these trees in over here real quick, those tree colors. So the other thing about uh, composition that I wanna talk about as I, as I get this forest in over here is you just have to kind of decide, are you gonna zoom in on the subject matter or are you gonna pan out and have that that wider frame landscape view. I know my eye, when I landscape paint, I tend to zoom in. And I'm, I'm trying to train myself to kind of zoom out a little bit more. So that's one thing you want to think about. You know, in addition to uh, breaking the compositional rules that I covered at the beginning and then simplifying your composition with three to four pieces and not adding too much detail, I think that a lot of times less is more. You know, you got to decide, you know, are you going to make it really, really intimate? Like if I had a big, if I had a big mountain, you could zoom in on just one slope of the mountain and really describe that piece and that shape and say something about that, you know, as opposed to just getting the whole mountain range in. And same with here on the river. You can kind of decide how much to get in here and how much not to get in here. I think for me, my compositional plan so far going along is really to just Keep it simple and stay simple. There's a lot that could, I could really get complicated with here, you know, tree branches and everything. And I'm not gonna do it. There's a cool color back there at the base of the evergreen forest. The cliff's kind of coming down and um, I wanna show you, I just wanna mix some, some alizarin crimson, a little bit of yellow ochre, and let's kind of take some blue. So I'll take a little bit of ultramarine blue, put it in there. I'm not going to over mix. I'm just going to kind of take it up on my palette knife and, and not over mix it and see what we can do here. Okay, so I'm going to go right back in here and just kind of show that that shape and that color just to give some some interest to my painting, I hope. There's a lot of minerals in them. As I've mentioned in previous paintings, you know, a lot of mining history in Colorado. And so there's that red, those red minerals in there that, that kind of give it that beautiful red color that uh, when people see it, they see these cliffs, they kind of know, you know, oh yeah, I know what that is. I know what that is. God, something scared me in the bush there. She. Did you hear that, Millie? Thought it was a bear, man. Squirrel. False alarm. Dark trees coming up here that we'll show in a minute with the snow. Really love that. And that's what you want to do when you're going along in an impressionistic uh, plein air landscape. You want to always look for opportunities to show contrast. Contrast creates interest. People like interesting paintings. They don't like boring paintings. So I'm going to look kind of beside it in the snow. And I'm going to look in the river. And I'm going to look around the borders of this piece. And I'm going to look out of the peripheral vision of my eye and it's going to give me the right color and the right value. You watch. Ready? Here we go. I'm going to do it. Let's try it. Okay, let's go. Okay, let's see if it worked. I think it did. It's maybe a little too green, so I'm going to add, add a little red, but at least now I see it. I know what I want. It's kind of like a gray. Yeah, there it is. I like a gray color of uh, the ice coming out. show hints of the river bend here. And this is a good opportunity in the composition to show lost and found edges right here. We'll do that in a little bit. We want to kind of find some edges and then they get lost in the snow and then they come back around the bend and you find them again. That creates interest in the painting as well. So I want to use some kind of energetic brush strokes and show that it is it is kind of trucking. Just let the edges blend into each other in this stage as you try to find and search for the right value color and temperature in each piece. That's if you're trying to paint impressionistically. If you're a realist, you don't want to do that. You want to try to be a little more particular and exact. I really marvel over those realist painters. Man, they're amazing. They can make stuff look like photographs. It's incredible. 
follow a couple other guys on, on YouTube. If you haven't seen um, Andrew Tischler and Samuel Earp, check those guys out from New Zealand. Just love their videos. Just amazing, amazingly talented painters and realism. Some of the rapids happening on the water. Kind of further describe that piece. And I'm just going to put a hint of them in there for now. That color in the water and the piece as a whole, you know, is, is it's just a little bit, a little bit lighter river color. And that may be because the light is changing, you know, maybe it wasn't like that when I started, but you have to kind of make these compositional choices as you go in your design. And I'm just going to kind of run with it with what I'm seeing. I like that it's a little bit lighter in value. It creates a little bit of contrast. Right here, there's some kind of river rapids. So I just want to use a little more energetic strokes right there to show that. I want to show shape and forming and modeling in those planes. Okay, so here's a compositional choice that we can make. Uh, there's a rock in the river there you can see it and the choice is you know do we put it in or do we not put it in and when I'm thinking about that I'm thinking I'm probably gonna put it in and it's not because I'm thinking about symmetry or focal points or rule of thirds or any of that it's because I'm a rebel and uh, I like the rock in the river and I want to show that it, it's a snowy day it's gonna add a little more contrast and a little bit of variety and something to break up that river piece just a little bit so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in because I think it says a lot about what drew me to this piece and why I wanted to paint this scene in the first place. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's put that rock right, let's put it right there. Nice dark color, alizarin crimson, some phthalo blue. Some water kind of. Rubbing up into it. Let me show that coming down the rock. Like that. Get, uh, get some highlights on the water. Not too many of them, just a few. Palette knife is fun to use. It takes a little bit of practice. Still haven't perfected it by any means, but it certainly does add some variety in your painting. Hey, let's look at this piece up here. I've been kind of saving it and just deciding what to do with it. And I'm seeing now, you know, as the weather's kind of changing, some really nice warmer greens on the evergreens up there. Just want to suggest these in impressionistic form that there's the forest up there coming down onto the hillside. I'm just going to kind of suggest as we get these kind of warm highlights in here in the forest. Love to hear from you guys. Go ahead and kind of put some put some thoughts in the comments about uh, about composition, what you think. Certainly I don't want to throw my view upon you like it's the only view because it isn't. I just wanted to give you some ideas and challenge your thinking a little bit and just see what you think. So go ahead and tell me your thoughts on composition. Or if you have ideas or questions, comments, go ahead. Love to hear from you. Love to hear where you're from and uh, your journey in plein air. If you're just starting, if you're thinking about starting. Okay, tree right here. Coming down on the riverbank. Another interesting one, kind of bending over.
Don't space them evenly apart. Just do it kind of randomly and just show some branches. Impressionistically coming out and that'll contrast nicely with the snow in the background. Right here, a little bit darker in value, those branches. Okay, and again, our, our mulch. Lighter, darker, warmer, cooler. Okay, well, part of our uh, compositional decision was to get those bushes in on the right-hand side of the snowbank because they were pretty colorful. So uh, let's go ahead and do that right now real quick. color in those we don't want to forget that uh, cottonwood color that's in in there just to kind of produce another color produce some contrast in the painting and those are along the riverbanks just quickly Don't finish lazy or don't finish tired. Stay in it to win it. Okay, let's take a quick look here at what we got. Some brush strokes up close and it's been a fun painting so far. We got real thick. We did keep the design and the composition very simple. I think you would agree. A little bit messy, maybe a little unfinished. A couple more strokes might do it just to bring it together, but uh, that's where we are so far and you know what drew me to this uh, scenery was kind of the quietness and stillness and just the beauty of a frozen river and, you know the quietness in a forest and uh, the contrast of some of the darker cooler colors with you know some of those warmer colors that did kind of show their show their warmth now and again when the light kind of changed but uh, I think it really says and speaks to what drew me to the scenery today Hey, let's head up into the avalanche zone and compare notes on why we chose this scene in this composition. Okay, pretty good day today. We got permission from the Idorado mine to trespass and paint on their property. This is a uh, old historic mine from years and years ago. It's just a very, very cool place to paint and amazing scenery. So let's go check it out. So let's look at this composition possibility. And again, I don't want to uh, imply that I have the only way and that you should not pay attention to the rules of composition as applies to photography and oil painting that you read about in books and blogs and, and on the internet. But uh, I just want to give you a different way of thinking about things as a beginner. Um, there is nothing wrong with thinking about the formulas and the rules of leading lines, focal point, rule of thirds. I just wouldn't worry about it if you're a beginner. I wouldn't uh, make that the primary concern because... You should be concerned about other things as a beginner, primarily learning how to paint, uh, learning how to mix your colors properly and how to nail your values. But uh, let's look at this, this composition possibility. It's really amazing, isn't it? I mean, look at the beauty of it. Just big billowy snow up here. And then that, of course, that old uh, gold mining, silver mining trolley right there. Uh, this presents some possibilities. Those evergreen trees are beautiful. Uh, we've got some leading lines with the tracks in the snow. Uh, that could be uh, something to help us uh, perspective and leading lines if you wanted to follow those rules. But, uh, you know, I'm looking, for an emo I'm looking for an emotion. I'm looking to paint from my heart. I'm, I'm trying to teach you a different way to think about this, to, to paint authentically and originally and try to get away with um, an emotion, an impression of what it felt like to be here. So that's what I'm searching for. That's what I'm looking for. What I don't like about this is on a sunny day, I would like a little more light and shadow. What I want to find today are those deep blue, purple, rich shadows that are so common to Colorado here as to why, why I love painting in the snow. Winter is my favorite time of year to paint. So where the, the sun is positioned in the sky, I don't, see a lot of, I don't see a lot of shadows on the mountains up there. And that's one thing I don't like compositionally. So I'm feeling it, but I'm not totally feeling it. You know what I mean? So here's what I'm thinking. Let's walk up this side of the mountain. I think there's something here that we're gonna find. Something is pulling me and attracting me to this side of the mountain. I think you'll agree with me maybe when we see it, what I'm hoping for. Let's check this out. Okay, let's go. 
Okay, I've got my sled here. Um, this is some deep snow. I'm gonna try to traverse this. Um, this is really deep right now. You can see, I'm, I'm, oh crap. I'm knee deep right now. I don't know if I can go any further. I have to put my snowshoes on and try this again. We could choose to get that, uh, that old gold mining little railway system in the painting. I'm gonna get by this yellow pole here if we can. It's really, really deep snow. But uh, check out this view and see that, see that old gold mine right there? That's the Yankee Girl Mine, one of the most productive silver mines in US history, right here, close to where I live. And a couple videos ago, we painted not far from here and did that painting on uh, how to simplify landscape paintings. Ask yourself three questions when you plan your paint. So watch that video if you haven't, but we were up here, man. And I like the light and shadow on the mountain. So compositionally, you know, what kind of attracts me to this, this situation is all that nice, beautiful, pillowy, puffy, marshmallowy snow and all the light and shadow that's in there. I think this is more kind of what I'm after. I wanna, I wanna paint something intimate. I might even just paint that side of the mountain like that, boom. I mean, compositionally, wouldn't that look amazing? Something unique, something different than your typical postcard painting, you know? I mean, it would be cool. I, I like to record the history of Colorado and Southwest Colorado. And I just, I paint up here because I love the silver mining and the gold mining history. So I just got to decide, do I want to get that mine in there or do I not want to get that mine in there? What do you think? Throw it in the comments. Would you put it in? Would you not? Let's see if I can get a little, I'm going to put my snowshoes on and try to get a little closer here. All right, here we go. Well, I don't know if Millie's gonna make it to where I am. I've got her, I've got her uh, mat and her blankie sitting there. Let's see. Oh, there she goes, and she's got her her thunder thunder jacket on today, so she should be warm. Yep, she's good. Okay, I think she's okay. Yeah, she's gonna have to stay behind. That's okay. Okay, we're all tucked in here, ready to go. Put it in time lapse mode. Do my drawing, and we'll move a little faster through this painting so you can see the finished product. Here we go. Okay, let's take a look at what I did here in the drawing stage of this and how we were thinking about composition. Um, I divided up into, oh, about four pieces. One piece is gonna be the uh, Yankee Girl Mine. That is really what kind of attracted me to this scene was the, the history, the gold mining, silver mining history. Piece number two is going to be, I mean, piece number two really could be the whole mountain that it's on, but I'm gonna make the evergreens on the mountain, piece number two, and then the snow on that mountain, piece number four. So I'll differentiate between evergreens and snow on that one big mountain piece. And then piece number three, I'm gonna put this foreground snow bank in to help me show a little perspective. Cause when you're this close, when you're on a mountain and you're looking at composition, even though I wanted it to be intimate composition and, and really just focus on this one area of the mountain, I gotta, I gotta be able to show a little bit of perspective somehow with my, my darks and my shadows. So I do have those in, but I think we're on track for a good composition, a good painting here. I want it to just be a simple, very, very few pieces and a very intimate painting that I just want to paint, you know, this emotion and this impression, this feeling that I have of being here on this beautiful sunny day, way up in the mountains. So let's see what, let's see how we do. And we'll talk about some points here as we go about composition, more of my thoughts. So stay with me. Here we go. Yeah. Um, working on kind of getting that, that darkest dark, my, my old silver mine in there, just with some quick dark strokes like that. I got this dark snowbank in here going that I like so far right here. That'll help me show a little bit of space and depth. Back to composition, you know, I really want to kind of make this feel like I'm on the side of a mountain, you know, on a, on a bright snowy, just tons of snow. You know, there's avalanche warnings up here today and there I can hear the explosives they're setting off. Avalanche control. There's a lot of snow up here, so I want to capture that. So these evergreens are a little bit darker right here, so I kind of want to show that. Just quickly block these in, just like this. 
work on this beautiful snow shadow here, part of what uh, kind of attracted me to this composition in the first place. I kind of think to myself, I might be 11,000 feet up, but uh, you know, up here out in the, the wide open, I can breathe, you know what I mean? Down below, <laughs> might be more oxygen, lower elevation, but uh, yeah, boy, just the, just the kind of the, the battles with sleeplessness and, you know, being anxious. I mean, not so much me, but my younger daughter and sometimes me. <laughs> um, just the concerns and the worries of the world, you know, playing our painting, just for a moment anyway, just kind of washes those away. And that's really what I love about it. I think we found the winning recipe here. What do you think? Jacket, bed. I don't like schlepping extra stuff around with me, but uh, I guess if it keeps my painting partner warm. Hey, what the heck? Check it out. There's some backcountry skiers right by that old mine. Can you see them? Got it zoomed in there, down there to the left. See them? That's pretty cool. Okay, so just remember, you know, with composition, I really, I really think it's better to be, to be original, authentic unique and hindered by rules you know that's all that's all i'm trying to get across here i'm just hitting the uh the sunlight on these evergreen trees high up as the light shifts i'm just trying to catch it remember to envision the finished painting before you start that helps with composition you know what attracted you to it make sure when you walk away at the end of the day that you caught that that feeling that impression that emotion don't walk away without getting that in your painting because people will feel that too, you know? When someone looks at a painting and their gaze is held upon it and they want to explore it more and look at it for a long period of time, it's not going to be because of grid lines, I'm just trying to say. It's going to be because you painted with your heart and you got your point across. You got, you got the message across as to why you were there and what it felt like to be there with that impression. So as we put the uh, the sun in the snow here and show where it's hitting, let's let's see if we can agree on this with composition. That good composition, no matter how it's achieved, causes the viewer to want to hold their gaze, to want to explore your painting further, it gets them to want to look at it and love it and like it. And wouldn't you say that that's a successful composition when you got the viewer or yourself? just to hold their eye and explore your painting just a little bit further. Just showing the big, big, thick, lots of snow up here. What kind of day that it is. Sunshine hitting this ridge right here, thick. Gotta go thick, right there. I'm trying to create contrast and interest in the painting. And I do that by varying my texture. I do that by light and shadow. And I do that by warms and cools. Okay, let's try to power pack this right here because it's closest to me. You want to kind of save your, your most powerful highlights for closest to you. You know, keep in mind with composition, I really paid no attention to balance of masses, leading lines, symmetry, rule of thirds any of that and not to say that that couldn't have helped me maybe it would have but as a beginner you know and thinking through your eyes what i focused on today was my colors my values and an intimate simple small pieces painting three or four pieces of what attracted me to this scenery and uh you know i think we caught it there's a lot of a lot of light and shadow going on up there there's some bright beautiful evergreen colors in the forest there's some shadow that, that old silver mine was super fun to try to capture the snow coming off of it and the light and shadow with it and just the history of it. But it just really feels like, you know, a light and shadow, big snow day up here, 11,000 feet in the mountains of Southwest Colorado. And so remember, uh, you know, envision the finished painting. Keep it just a few pieces. Keep it simple. Keep the composition very simple. Don't overcomplicate it, over detail it to death. And just really try to capture that impression, that mood, that feeling that made you say, hey, I want to paint in that direction. And uh, I think that's your winning recipe for a great painting. Well, there's another view, you know, as the sun shifts on the uh, the old silver mine, Yankee Girl Mine up here in the mountains. Hey, that was fun. Thanks for joining me. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, share this video, like it, uh, leave me some comments, show me that you're alive, show me you're there. 
Give some support to the channel. If you could watch another video, it would be super helpful to the channel. What a beautiful time. What a beautiful scenery that we had here today up in the mountains. It's time to sign off. God bless. Take care. See you next time.